so Seth Rogen was actually going to play Seth, but ironically, even though he's only two years older than Jonah Hill, he looked just way too old for the role. He just looks like an old man. And Jonah Hill looked much younger, so that's why they cast him instead. What, are you going to make me sit here and eat dessert alone like I'm Steven Glansberg? Super bad, baby. Oh, yeah. I can't wait to talk about this movie. Super bad is one of the best teen comedies ever. It's the last big hit teen comedy because this movie grossed $170 million at the box Jesus. office on a budget of $20 million. This made bank. It's a movie that took culture by storm. We were in, what was it, 2007 this came out? So in 2007, we would have been juniors, juniors. sophomore juniors yeah. in high Same school. Same age as the guys. It's insane. Yeah. So around high school, everybody was quoting this movie for like two years. <laughs> Is this an anchorman? Everyone was talking about them. I can't remember whose parents took us to this because we, we weren't 18 when we saw this movie. I can't remember if we snuck in. Or if maybe someone's parents took us. Or maybe our brother, dad. Or did maybe brother, one of our I think, brothers. I think maybe dad took us. Yeah, dad didn't care what we watched. That was, was That's what was great about going to the movies with dad. Is like He was just like, yeah, whatever you guys want to see. It's, Divorce it's cool parents, uh, movies with dad on the weekends. See whatever you want. Rated R. doesn't matter. Literally, the, the, <laughs> the chef is what our life was like. We would go bowling and go to the movies. It was the best. <laughs> Every Friday night. <laughs> but Super Bad is just iconic. It's so goddamn funny. It's vulgar, so that's a warning. We're going to be quoting this movie and saying, some vulgar shit in this episode because it's super bad. Oh, James. They captured the vulgarity of what teenagers are really like so well, and it's authentic to kids. This is how teens talk when they're in high school. This is why when we talked about American Pie, I loved how accurate it was to the way that we talked when we were in high school. When we were 15, 16, 17 years old. We're rebellious. We're angsty. We're growing. We have hormones. Our bodies are changing. We're just saying all kinds of things, and we're anti-authority, like Fuck the teachers. Fuck school. I'm going to park in the faculty parking lot. Screw my parents. Why would you pack and park in the staff parking lot? Because you're not staff. I know that, Fogel. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> Can you guys answer me? <laughs> <laughs> and the characters are so iconic in this movie. Seth, Evan, Fogel, Seth Rogen, and Evan Goldberg wrote super bad when they were teenagers the original idea the original story eventually got made into the movie directed by greg matola and again on a budget of 20 million dollars it grossed 170 million dollars at the box office imdb it's a 7.6 which is insanely high for a comedy if you ask my opinion ron tomatoes it's an 88 percent critic score 87 percent audience score right on the money critics and audiences agree that this is legendary letterbox it's a 3.9 that's very high for Letterbox. For a for a raunchy comedy, this is like the highest rated. It one. has to be, yeah. yeah. But I adore this. I movie. can't believe this movie in two thousand seven grossed thirty three million dollars opening weekend. Insane. That's wild. Comedies were huge back two yeah. thousands, man. Mid two thousands, we were at peak comedy, and this really made Jonah Hill's career. Uh, you see a lot of younger actors in this. Emma Stone, obviously, this is her first role ever, and in a film as an actor. But her um, breakout was Easy A, really. Easy A was her big breakout. Michael Sarah, he's already pretty established with the TV show. Um, fuck, what's it called? Oh, um, <laughs> Arrested Development. Arrested Development, yeah. Sorry, the, it escaped me, even though I watched it. <laughs> it escaped me. Yeah, that's a great show. <laughs> but in that, this blew him up as well. But Jonah Hill absolutely dominates this movie. This is, in a lot of ways, when I watch it, like the Jonah Hill show. 100%. So much improv, so many great lines. He carries the movie. And it's really, the whole movie really feeds off of, I know we get Bill Hader and Seth Rogen as the cops with Fogel or McLovin. And that's a good chunk of the storyline. But the movie really is, it's the Jonah Hill and Michael Sarah movie, essentially. And they are absolutely phenomenal together. I'm surprised they never made a movie again together, like as them two in, in the leads of a movie. I Maybe because they didn't want to... It would feel cheap to like copy and paste their comedy from yeah. this film. I'm sure they got asked. Or I'm offered sure they got. Scripts. Yeah, I'm sure they got offered lots of stuff. But also, this was an early Apatow production, so Judd Apatow had made the Forty Year Old Virgin, and this was his first huge hit as a sole producer, outside of TV, obviously. And this was billed as like a Judd Apatow movie, even though his two other movies hadn't even come out yet. So he also produced Dewey Cox Story and something else this year. And he was billed as, like, the producer of those movies in the trailer for this movie. 
before those ones even came out. When did Knocked Up come out? Knocked Up, oh, 2007. So it was the same year? Same year, I believe. So that's probably what it was. Yeah. And I love it. It has the, the imprints of Judd Apatow all over it, as well as the great comedy and humor from Evan Goldberg and Seth Rogen we've come to know and loved, obviously, Pineapple Express. But they're actually great producers as well. They've done a bunch of projects together just from producing and behind the, the camera perspective. Like, right now, they're killing it with the boys, Gen V, and Invincible. They just have a great relationship with Amazon. They have Amazon's best shows, you could argue. They're producing the best content for original projects at Amazon for, for their stream platform. So they're awesome. Obviously, like I said, they wrote this when they were in their teen years. It's loosely based off their own experience as seniors in Vancouver in the late 1990s. Hence, the character names are Seth and Evan. Other characters and references references were influenced by Goldberg and Rogan's adolescence, such as Steven Glansberg, <laughs> their peer at Grey Point Secondary School, characterized in the film as a loner, as well as Fogel was also a real friend of Rogan and Goldberg, according to an interview they did at a panel in 2009 for the film. They also said that the Saturday night montage scene of when Evans telling Becca what they do on Saturday nights. Oh, yeah. Saturday was wild night. Yeah. <laughs> they said that was beat for beat what they did with their Fred Vogel. <laughs> Every Saturday night. It just cracked me up. It's amazing. And, and we love this movie. And we figure we're going to do something a little different with it. Since there aren't a ton of scenes, this movie entirely takes place one afternoon, one night. And we're going to kind of just go chronologically through the film and just talk about it scene by scene. We don't usually do that, but because it's not great character analysis going on or anything like that, we figured it'd just be fun to talk about the scenes one at a time or, or sequences one at a time and just talk about what makes them so funny and, and great. I love um, another big breakout for this was Bill Hader. Yes. Post SNL, really, coming off that Yeah, show. he was still doing SNL, but it was his first huge hit, and then he did Tropic Thunder. And do you know about his impression in this movie? His impression? I mean, I mean, I'm sorry. The impression in Tropic Thunder is probably not what he did this year. In this movie, he impersonated a cop who arrested him when he was a teenager. <laughs> and he With said, the glasses "Yeah." And so he said the cop wore glasses, and he's like, "How <laughs> how can anyone be intimidated by a police officer wearing glasses?" <laughs> so that's who we, that's who he did his basis performance on in this film. Is he got arrested when he was like 17 for something stupid? Oh no, it's the cops! Oh no, it's the cops! But for Tropic Thunder, he impersonated a studio executive that Ben Stiller knew. And so when Ben Stiller interviewed him for the role, he's like, hey, do this impersonation of this guy, this studio exec. So he did it for Ben. He's like, that's hilarious. Do that for that. He plays Les Grossman's like assistant, basically, yeah, right? In, exactly. in Tropic Thunder. Yeah, yeah. But he's great because he's such a character actor. And he does like kind of disappear in his roles, even as a comedian, like Will Ferrell does. He commits 100%. Yeah. And everyone in this movie pretty much commits to their roles, I think. But Bill Hader is one of the best performers for sure. Jonah Hill, like you said, he holds this shoot, this movie on his shoulders, man. He oh, carries yeah. the hell out of this thing. Not to say that Michael Cera isn't terrific as well, but like you said, this is sort of the Jonah Hill show. I read that Evan Goldberg and Seth Rogen said that while they were making the film, they couldn't really tell what Michael Cera was doing. And if he was doing anything at all with his scenes, he seemed very like uninteresting in the in the video footage that they would watch so they were using video village and th but then they said they got a huge blow up screen to project the footage on that and then they saw the subtle beats of his comedy and his very dry humor but they were worried about him being very flat and then they realized oh he's actually doing a lot once they blew up the footage same thing with Christopher Mintz plus Jonah Hill initially didn't like working with him when in their test screenings and they did a few scenes together just for test and Jonah Hill complained about him to Rogan and Goldberg saying, this guy's walking all over my lines, he's stuttering, he's messing up. But then they played him the footage back and he, they, he realized that Mintz Plassi was like perfectly setting him up for his jokes and in a way letting Jonah Hill really fly with his comedy by being like the assist giver. And then, then he realized, oh shit, he's like making me look better. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a great point because comedy, you can't always tell that it's working until you sort of see it. And you see the scene play, especially when you're do, doing different takes, different setups, doing a close-up. And someone specifically like Michael Sarah, who's, whose humor is so unique and so subtle and dry. Not even everyone gets his style of humor, mm -hmm. but his style of comedy is excellent. It fits movies really well like this, Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. He's hysterical in that movie. Some people maybe don't get it, but I think obviously coming from Arrested Development, which is an insanely dry humor show, he's perfectly cast, and th there's a lot to that nuance. Comedy isn't always just about being loud, boisterous, saying something witty or clever. It can be just as something as simple as being subtle, nuanced, even reserved and quiet at times, because it can work just as well. Yeah, it's not always Will Ferrell. Let's be as loud as possible. Yeah, even though silly I, it's as silly as possible. My favorite. But the things with 
with Michael Sarah, his awkwardness is his great humor. That's mm-hmm. his key to his comedy is being awkward and shy, but also just being so naive and innocent at the same time. And this movie is so funny. Like there are comedies and they have famous lines that everybody quotes. This film, this movie is like really in its own boat because there's so many deep track lines and references and funny bits and moments that like you don't even you don't even remember, but then you watch it again and then someone says a line, you're like, I can't believe that that's so fucking funny. You're reciting yeah. along the entire film. We could have just gone quote for quote with this movie and yeah. done like a little laugh track along with it because there, there's so many deep tracks of quotes. Deep tracks, the yeah. whole goddamn thing's a quote. I do have a favorite and it kills me every time. Well, we'll get to that when it's we do so our superlatives funny. halfway through the episode. But we might as well get into Super Bad again. Came out in two thousand and seven. Great opening because we have the sort of playing on those old iPod commercials with Apple with the silhouette green screen with the great funky music and they're just dancing on screen. The YouTube yeah. commercial. It's a great it. way to open the movie because yeah. the, the soundtrack is really good in this movie. It's, it's excellent. It's very well selected, but it's also got some great groovy tracks. The kind of opposite of what the characters are because they're such dorky guys. Then you have some cool groovy tracks throughout the song, throughout it, the movie. It works for the tone. It really yeah. helps establish the tone. And this opening helps establish the tone immediately. The funny thing about the dance number for the opening credits is Evan Goldberg, as a joke for the DVD of this movie, he asked Michael Sarah to do that, to do a dance for an hour straight. <laughs> and so the DVD main menu of this movie, it's uh, usually their loops of like 30 seconds. Yeah, yeah. Back in the DVD times where... Like you'd wake up from yeah. your DVD, that it, the movie finished playing and you're on the home screen. Yeah, so that home screen of like the main menu of options in a DVD, it would be a loop of like a video or maybe just like a graphic that moved with some music and they would loop like a 30 second loop and it would just start over. So every Goldberg thought it would be funny if they did an hour long loop so that just for like the rare occasion of someone just leaving it on to see how long <laughs> is this loop going to go that it was and it was actually Michael Sarah dancing for an hour straight that they recorded for this. That's amazing. That's so cool. Yeah. I remember the Sorcerer's Stone one. Oh yeah. Yeah. With the train. Like, we loved that DVD. Yeah. Did it have a train? I thought it was them when they were getting to Diagon Alley. I think it was a supercut. I thought it was Diagon Alley when they were like hitting the bricks. Oh my god, you're right. Yeah. It was the Diagon Alley and the then bricks, the brick wall the moving, with the and options. Then, and those the options came up. Man, fucking DVD menus. The Memento one was really great too. But great opening. But then it sort of just gets you ready for this opening scene where Evan is going to pick up I mean Seth is going to pick up Evan for high school. You can assume they've done this every single day. <laughs> they're on the they're on the phones talking to each other and they're talking about porn websites and which one to subscribe to because we're Fantastic be- Voyage. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny because they're arguing about what to pay for. He's in Evan's like, if I'm paying top dollar, I want some production stuff. I'm sorry that the Coen brothers don't produce the porn that we make. They're kind of hard to get a hold of. <laughs> I want some transitions, at least, some edits or whatever. It's so funny. I love when he pulls up to his house and Evan walks out and they're still talking on the phone. You have like the the overtone of the speakerphone from his car, just the, the interference coming out. And they're still on the phone talking, even though they see each other. <laughs> I love they're talking about one porn site and then Seth's like, yeah, but you don't get to see the dick going in. <laughs> That's a problem for Evan's, me. Yeah. <laughs> you ever seen a vagina by itself? Not for me. Not for me. Not for me. <laughs> <laughs> what about Perfect 10? I mean, Perfect 10, because, you know, your mom and dad are going to be seeing the bills. It sounds like a bowling website. Because <laughs> <laughs> your mom and dad are going to be paid for it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god and we learned all the information we really need for these characters right away they're they're best friends obviously mm-hmm. they're both dorky they're losers for sure and also they got to different colleges you know evan's going to dartmouth seth didn't get in they're talking to their mom and obviously seth is just being so nice to her and flirting with her kind of but you know we, we get the, <laughs> the the exposition of the characters that we need that creates conflict by the end of the movie which is pretty solid writing yeah where they're gonna go to different schools but little does seth know that Evan's going to be rooming with Fogel, although Seth secretly knows because he saw Evan's uh, housing department papers. And, and like uh, housing cl- papers, yeah. housing <laughs> department. <laughs> and a cliche of uh, many teen comedies is they're both obsessed with getting laid. However, it's kind of out of fear. Seth wants to get laid out of fear and get a girlfriend because he's afraid of being a virgin when he goes to college. By the time I'm in college, I'll be the Iron Chef of Pounding Vaj. <laughs> so he's obsessed with making um, sorry, Jules. Jules his girlfriend for the summer. <laughs> <laughs> so dumb. <laughs> but they're not like trying to hook up with girls just to hook up with them. He, it comes from a place of he's 
incredibly insecure and terrified of going to college as a virgin. Yeah, I, I agree. I feel like a lot of people felt that. And that's a, the plot of many high school economies is yeah, losing yeah. your virginity. But also, I think that adds a little better conflict where they're afraid of going to college without being good at sex. Yeah, it comes from their insecurity. Because everyone's like, oh, but you're going to go to college. Everyone has sex in college. And then Seth's like, yeah, well, the point is to be good at sex when you get to college. <laughs> Nobody wants to think I suck dick at a fucking pussy. <laughs> 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 and they both have their crushes. Obviously, Seth has this crush on Jules, who's cool. And also, Evan says that, you know, she got a lot of hotter over the summer. She probably went through maturity, <laughs> her adolescence and her puberty. And she hasn't noticed yet. She's always talking to you and flirting with you, which is such a dig. <laughs> she obviously doesn't notice that she's hot because she's always talking to you, Seth. Seth's always humiliating. Oh, you know, he, Evan humiliates him there. Yeah. yeah. And then Evan's really got the, got a huge crush on Becca, who Jonah hates, who Seth hates and is talking smack about. <laughs> For some reason, we'll learn later. You know, I'm sick of you talking about her like that. I am too. I am too. <laughs> One of my favorite jokes in this movie. So obviously they get to college. Seth Parks in the they faculty. They get to school. I mean, they get to school. <laughs> and Seth Parks in the faculty parking lot. I was like, what are you doing? He's like, screw it. It's my last week. They should be sucking on my balls. <laughs> He's like, it's really dumb to park there. <laughs> Why'd you park in the staff parking lot? Because you're not staff. <laughs> <laughs> I know that, Bogo. I know that. <laughs> Can you answer me? Are you taking me up after work? Can you guys answer me? You look like Pinocchio. <laughs> but, so first they go to the convenience store because he needs a Red Bull before school. And I love how he's that's like insulting Evan. He's like, "Can you get this?" <laughs> <laughs> the best joke. It might be the best joke. But it's, it's so casual. They're at the checkout, having a conversation about Becca. Basically, he's like, "Oh, and can you get this?" But by the way, man, like, <laughs> <laughs> it kills me every time because he's destroying Evan and Becca. And he's like, "Can you get this? <laughs> get this for me?" <laughs> it's so oh silly. Oh my god! Leave the convenience store. Steve, the the kid who's throwing the big party, Jesse, the grad, oh, Jesse, the grad party. Just he just feels like a Steve. I yeah. don't know. Jesse, he throwing, looks like a Jesse. Yeah, he's, no he's, offense to Jesse's out there. <laughs> he's throwing the big grad party. His actually original name was Trey, but they changed it to Jesse when they filmed it. Really? Yeah. I wonder why. So, it feels right. I guess it feels like a Jesse. No offense to Jesse's out there. <laughs> Hawksalugi on Seth says he can't come to the party. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jesse wants me to tell you you're not invited to his party. <laughs> you know, you really bitched up back there. <laughs> me? You're fucking Judas. You betrayed me. What do you want me to do? Dive in front of the spit? <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, it's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want me to do? Jump in front of the spin. <laughs> and all right. And home Mac. Home Mac is this might be one of my favorite scenes in the it's whole one movie. One of my favorites. Well, well hold on. well first Oh I know so the uh so the first they go to a couple classes and then it's the Evan and Becca scene. Evan he gives her <laughs> he gives her his pen. Staring at her. <laughs> staring at her boobs during class. And then she turns around, he just like looks out the window. He's like, like Oh wait. <laughs> <laughs> And it's a super fun conversation because we get how awkward Evan is in front of people, and especially his crush. And how oblivious he is that she's interested in him. Because then he tells her about, she's like, what'd you do this weekend? And he's like, oh, Saturday night. It was just, you know, me, me Seth, and Fogel. You know, we go crazy. <laughs> me and Seth always plan these events. <laughs> and and they, they, Saturday was a crazy night. You know, we... Uh, we got together with some friends, had some drinks in the in the chill zone, so we call it. But they're really just watching porn in the basement. <laughs> and then we had a party. Our, Seth's parents were throwing a party. We got to converse with older people and adults. And I le I talked to a man who I can't remember what the anecdote is, but something silly. He said he claimed to have climbed five mountains, <laughs> but they're really drunk and shitting and, and being like idiots all over the party. And there's like adults like watching them, like what the fuck is this? Like all their parents yeah. are there. And like, oh, we got into a club right away. We got right in. And you got in. Yeah, we got right in. It's just a, it's a strip club. It's a titty bar. And they puked outside. <laughs> and then, like you said, he, he's oblivious because Becca says, I'd really like to do something like that. He's like, oh, yeah, who wouldn't? <laughs> who wouldn't? He's so nervous. <laughs> he's such an idiot. You know, he's he's a great actor because he makes you feel like you're talking to a girl and you're nervous about it, too. Yeah, yeah. It's similar to, what was the movie we were talking about recently where someone was talking to a girl and you felt nervous while watching Whiplash. Him. Whiplash. Yeah, Miles Teller was great. Yeah, I, I got like warm and sweaty watching him talk to a girl in that movie. <laughs> it's good acting right there. But then it's the pen scene where... Oh my God. <laughs> That's yours. You can keep it. And then he walks away. All right, bye, bye. <laughs> and first he punches her boob by accident. <laughs> Is that? No, it's later. That's no, later. Yeah, it's later. later. Yeah, don't move ahead. Bye, Evan. Bye. <laughs> She's like, bye, Evan. <laughs> <laughs> They're walking in the same direction. <laughs> I feel like everyone's done that though. When you're you're in high school and you have a crush, 
you're so nervous to talk to them, or at least I was, and you kind of do silly stuff. Oh, like I that. absolutely was. You do silly you stuff do like stupid that. stuff. It's just like flight or flight comes in. <laughs> then Homec, one of the best scenes Homec's in the whole great. movie. And it opens with – Oh, for, but she asked, she asked him about him and, Ev, and Seth splitting up for school. He's like, don't worry about it. I'm not worried about it. I'm not worried about it at all. <laughs> <laughs> then Homec opens with Seth having a – freaking out on the teacher because – his partner's never there. He doesn't get twice the work. He's terrible. Like, what am I going to need to make tiramisu? I'm a single mom. I, I wash and dry. Nobody takes this class seriously. Everybody takes it because it it's an easy A. Not to put down your profession or anything, but... That's the way it is. Give it's me a fucking break. <laughs> Sorry for cursing. It's three weeks left in school. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. Look at Evan. He looks like he's having the best time ever. It looks like the most fun ever. He's with Maroki. They're, they're, he's putting on the aprons on each other. They're, like, having so Hurry much Hurry up fun. there. I'm getting impatient. I'm getting, getting impatient. <laughs> <laughs> you can partner up with Jules. All right, I'll give Homeck another oh, chance. Jules. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Greg, back and forth between Jules and Seth. And Seth's being just dirty and disgusting behind her. And then Evan and Maroki are making the most glorious tiramisu with the cat face. It's yeah. so funny. And he's laughing at everything she says, even when it's not a joke, because he <laughs> just thinks that will make her like him. <laughs> he's like, oh my God, that's so funny. Emma Stone's great in this movie, too. Oh, yeah, she's great. She, I mean, she delivers the lines so well, like compared to a lot, half the cast. Oh, she's she's great with comedy. I hope she does more, um, like another raunchy comedy like this. It would be great. And I, I love her first line, because he asks her, hey, you're so you're partner didn't come in today she's like it's a personal question <laughs> <laughs> oh you mean like sex oh you mean like come like come coming, in coming like uh. <laughs> she's like it's a little bit too much because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he spends his time talking to evan and vogel all day <laughs> it's not how to talk normally all right and then obviously speak of the devil who shows up we get the introduction of the iconic vogel We're talking about Anna in the hallway. And then but also before that happens, Jules invites Seth to a grad party that night. She's like, My parents are out of town. I'm thinking about having like a party. He's like, Oh yeah, I love parties. They're like they're love hate. Oh really? I never see you at them. Yeah, just sometimes I love them, sometimes right now I really love them. I really love them right now. And so (laughs) he goes to tell Evan, He's like, Jules, invite us to a party night. And then Fogel's coming through the door. Don't don't tell Fogel anything. <laughs> <laughs> Fogel's like, what's up, gangsters? And he's talking about how he's getting a fake ID. And then Seth goes, oh, no way, because Evan just said, I heard about this party. Don't tell Fogel about it. But now you can buy us the booze. Uh, sh- yeah, yeah, I can, I buy, can the buy the booze. booze. <laughs> chicken, chicken, yeah, we're going to get crunk. <laughs> get our drink on. Get our crunk on. I love the story about Anna in the hallway. He was following Anna. Is it Michaela or Anna? Uh, it's, it's two. It's, she has like two names, like Anna Michaela or something. Oh, let me check. I thought yeah. it was Michaela. But he's following her in the hallway. She was wearing these white pants with this white, with this black Nicola. 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 Yeah, Nicola. Nicola. Yeah, Mince Plassey mumbles a bit. It's hard to listen to him at first. Something bit. like that. Yeah. Nicola was walking in the hallway. She's wearing this black G-string. I told her what time it was. Um, it's 10.33. What? <laughs> and then he runs away. <laughs> and so their plan is Fog is going to go get his fake ID, the same place that Mike Snyder got his, Steiner got his, and then they're going to get the boost for the party for themselves. And then... I love how also Evan's tiramisu is pristine. Yeah, yeah. It's perfect. It's like, it's like most, cleaning the bowl. It's good shit, huh, Maroki? <laughs> <laughs> and the same thing with Becca. Jules is like, oh, so you guys are going to different schools. What are you cutting the cord? What's going to happen? Away. It's like, oh, we don't do everything together. We're going to be okay. All right, I got to take a piss. It's not going to shake babe. itself. <laughs> Come on, baby. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, we get to Evan finds Becca to tell her that uh, he's going to the party and that uh, Fogel has a fake ID, and then she asks him for the gold slick vodka. Is that is that that point? Yeah, because then they also have no first day of lunch. Okay, yes. First, lunch. it's lunch, and we get the iconic penis story of why Seth hates Becca so much. And Evan's like, you know, I'm, I'm getting sick of you talking about her like that. Like, I want to know why. Like, I, I, me too. I fucking hate Becca. <laughs> I'm sick of it too. He's like, all right, man. All right, Evan. You know. It's gonna, there's a deep story, so it tells him about how when he was a kid, he had a problem. Something like 8% of kids do it. 9% of kids don't do it. 8% of kids do it. It's not that big of a deal. So I just used to sit around all day and draw pictures of dicks. What? Just sit around all day and draw pictures of dicks. Like a man dick? I couldn't touch pen to paper without drawing a dick. <laughs> <laughs> Great, hilarious flashback. Of- and uh, Evan Goldberg's brother actually did all the art. Do you really? Yeah, he's an artist. <laughs> That's pretty and he funny. Made, uh, up to a, he made up to close to a thousand different dicks. And they, Jesus. So they used like the best ones for the movie. It's a lot of drawings. I remember 
this was like gut busting, laugh out loud, funny in the theater. It was, it was like the theater was going crazy in this sequence. It's the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. I feel like at the time, and just this great montage of the perfectly cast young Seth just drawing pictures of dicks very everywhere. Very great, very good drawer. Yeah, he drew like all kinds. He drew robot dicks. He drew the dick who's like in front of the tanks, like famous paintings and drawings and photographs. <laughs> I like the gorilla with the banana dick. It's insane. So got <laughs> ro- yeah, robo dick. It's hysterical. Cowboy dick. And then one day, your precious little Becca, another perfectly cast child star for the the role, is sitting next to me. And I was very secretive about this dick drawing operation. You know, I knew it was fucked up too. So I used to hide them all in this <laughs> Ghostbusters lunchbox that I had. <laughs> and then one day, they cut to a bully knocking over his stuff saying, Pussy, you hit Becca with your dick? <laughs> 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 and then Becca rats him out after finding the drawing to the principal. And so they did two shots. So they did Becca reacting to it. And obviously, there wasn't anything on that paper. And then they did a, a reverse of her hands holding it. It was actually... Uh, an adult woman's hands holding that drawing. Yeah, probably gonna stay yeah. legal. Yeah, <laughs> you don't want to show that to a little kid. And it's great moments. It's hysterical. And the principal's a, a religious freak who's like thinks he's possessed. That by was a, possessed by a dick demon. <laughs> <laughs> Had to stop eating foods that were shaped like dicks. Went to a therapist who just asked me questions about dicks. <laughs> you know how many foods are shaped like dicks? The best kinds: hot dogs, popsicles. Yeah. 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 And so the story is really awkward and uncomfortable for Evan. And then Evan has to leave. He's like, what, are you going to leave me here so I have to eat dessert alone? So like I got to eat dessert alone like I'm fucking Steven Glansberg? <laughs> <laughs> and it comes to Steven Glansberg just looking out into nothing. <laughs> you could really feel the sort of social anxiety in this moment, too, because Evan gets up. And it's a great, like, tracking shot. You get the, the sound of the the cafeteria, and it just feels really anxious. You know, you, you feel that. And then Seth, when he's by himself, he's immediately gets be- he becomes very insecure. That's what I mean. Yeah. yeah. And then, then that's it's you. I I assume it's the same bully that knocked down the drawing. When it's flashback, knocked down his lunch as well. Pussy. Pussy. <laughs> All right, moving on to alcohol. Seth runs into Jules and her stupid fucking friend. <laughs> <laughs> Jules, your stupid fucking friend just asked us to buy liquor for the party. <laughs> <laughs> and they ask jo- Seth to get booze for the party, which is hysterical because it's Fogel who's got the fake ID. He hasn't even gotten the fake ID yet, but just because he finally has an in with Jules, he's going to say, oh yeah, we could totally get you booze for the party. Basically lying. I can get you alcohol. <laughs> You scratch my. The funny thing about my back, Jules, is actually located on my cock. <laughs> you know, we scratch your bar, our backs, we'll scratch yours. <laughs> so, shit, a little different shit. Either way, either way, either way, either way. You still, you see, yeah, you no, either it. way. So, <laughs> he agrees to get them boost for the party and then goes to the soccer field. She gives field. him her money. Yeah, for, yeah. 100 bucks for the party. Goes to the soccer field. Jules, ask, Jules, and your stupid fucking friend, ask me to get party booze for their party. She wants it. She wants, she's making a salad. She wants Seth's own dressing. <laughs> she wants my dick in or around her mouth. <laughs> Seth's own dressing. <laughs> Seth's own dressing. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, fucking Dave Franco comes up. The fuck ever. We're down two points. It's just soccer, man. It's just soccer. <laughs> fuck you. Why don't you go piss your pants? It's like eight years ago, man. People don't forget. <laughs> I love how Evan's the voice of reason. Like, don't you think that what if she's just using you to get alcohol? And Evan sets like, that's the first thing that came into my mind. <laughs> <laughs> then I remembered in class that she said she has an older sister. She could have just asked her, her older brother. Well, the she, flashback is like, she says, yeah, I have my older brother. I also, I, I, I want to blow you, Seth. Seth. I want to blow you. <laughs> <laughs> All this laughing is getting oh my God. congested. <laughs> So funny. And I love how at the end of the conversation, Seth's leaving and he kicks the soccer ball into the stands and the gym teacher's like, you're getting that, no, Seth. No, not. <laughs> <laughs> I love uh, how the teachers interact with students. It's very realistic. Like they call them by like, sometimes their last name or just their first name. And it's like they're just annoying kids as opposed to like being more professional like other, in other movies. One of the funniest shots is when I think we cut to Seth is also at gym class too and he's outside on the track running. And the person with the, <laughs> am- the amputated student, he's running past him with ease while Seth's out of the breast. He's like, pussy! <laughs> Fogel! <laughs> Come on, get out of here, man. You're going to make me run laps again. <laughs> Listen up, man. Jules and her stupid fucking friend. <laughs> <laughs> and then now Evan goes to Becca to tell her that uh, they have a fake ID. And then she's like, oh, could you get me gold slick vodka? And I offered to pay for it. I felt like a pimp. 
Yeah. <laughs> no, first of many. Get used to it, sister. Get used to it, sister. <laughs> no, it's on me. <laughs> Get used to it, sister. And then he goes to nudge her, and someone bumps into her, and he punches her boob. It's so goddamn funny and awkward. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't I'm going to do, do that. I'm going to do like a, like a friend. It's okay. It's okay. I'm, I'm meant to. Yeah, that guy came out of nowhere. <laughs> sorry. 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 <laughs> sorry. We used to do that in school all the time. Sorry. Dude, we still quote this movie. Yeah. What are you talking about? You used true. to do it all the time. Mm. And I love what's next is because it's a terrible plan. They don't even have the fake ID yet. And they're lying about being able to get booze based off the fact that hopefully Fogel gets and the Fogel ID. And Fogel disappeared. He didn't show up when they, he was supposed to. They're like, fuck, he, Fogel fucked us. I knew it. I knew it. We can't trust that. Trust that. <laughs> <laughs> what, are you, what are you making? Just drilling holes. Two weeks left of school. Fuck it. Fuck it. <laughs> 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 and then Fogel finally shows up outside of school. And and Seth's berating him like, where the fuck were you? And then they show him the ID. It's, okay, it's it's uh, out of state, Hawaii. Okay, okay hard good. to trace. Wait, we, this just has one name, McLovin? McLovin? What are you, an Irish R&B singer? What, what are you, you Seal? seal? <laughs> <laughs> it was either this. It was, yeah, they let you pick whatever name you want. It was either this or Muhammad. Why would it be between, be, why would it be between McLovin and Muhammad? <laughs> Muhammad's the most commonly used name in the, in the world. Read a fucking book. <laughs> Have you ever actually met anyone named Muhammad? <laughs> Have you ever met anyone named McLovin? <laughs> no, because it's a dumb fucking made-up name. 25? Why are you 25? Why would you put 21? Guys, everybody. Everybody who has a fake ID knows that there's everyone's looking for 21. How many 21 year olds can there be in this town? It's called strategy. <laughs> it's called First strategy. of all, you look, you look like a future pedophile in this photo. <laughs> <laughs> it might work. It's a fine ID. <laughs> oh my god, it's so funny. And so now they split up. No, <laughs> Seth's car is oh, towed. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, did you move my car? <laughs> Why would you park in the staff parking lot? Because you're not staff. I know that, Vogel. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> they leave. Because you're not staff. <laughs> Are you guys going to pick me up after work? Can you can you answer me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. And then it's Seth, at, it's Seth and Evan at Evan's house, and Evan's playing video games while Seth's going through his clothes. Do you have anything that's not from Baby Gap? Because <laughs> <laughs> Seth screwed up because his car's towed. If he goes home, he's going to get grounded. He won't yeah. be able to go out, so he can't go home. And so he's just trying to go through Evan's clothes. He's like, you want to see what my dad has? Do you have anything that's non-infant clothes? <laughs> <laughs> I love the uh, shot. Of, it, it goes, you want to see what my dad has? Then it cuts to them walking out of the bus. It's just a hysterical outfit. It's slow motion with that, yeah, the great outfit. And we have, are you man enough? Big and bad enough. And then it cut, So they walk in slow motion off the bus. And then it cuts to Fogel leaving his work, and then it cuts back to set. <laughs> Seth, Seth, he's got the like, vest on. Yeah, he's like, "What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> what is that? It's a vest." You, you try like to look Aladdin. older. You look like Aladdin. You look like Pinocchio. <laughs> and Seth's plan is because the ID is so bad, he's gonna be like, "All right, Seth's gonna have to take control. I'm gonna steal the booze." So he's willing to go steal alcohol from a grocery store to get laid. That's how desperate he is to have sex. <laughs> I love. The, his imagination in this of the the failed attempts at buying alcohol because first it's like he's in the aisle and the old lady he asks if she needs help and then it cuts to them at the register and she's buying him the alcohol and she goes he goes enjoy your remaining gears I will enjoy fucking jewels I will <laughs> and then it cuts to the security guard no you skip the cashier the cashier yeah so he just goes up he's like that you're 21 right I am all right that'll you be eighty dollars are that'll be eighty dollars yes you are Seth. <laughs> Thank you very much, Seth. He has an eighty-dollar bill. Yeah. <laughs> High fives. <laughs> and then the, the third one is he grabs a bottle and the security guard comes up behind him. Don't do it, kid. I never had a choice. <laughs> and then he throws it. Security guard catches it and then he throws it back at Seth, who dodges it and hits the old lady. You fucking killed her. <laughs> and then he, the security guard takes the broken bottle and slits his throat. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! And the, the slit throat looks great. Yeah, it looks solid. <laughs> he's, ble he's bleeding out. <laughs> And then it cuts to him leaving the liquor store. He didn't do anything. <laughs> and then he's like, I would have done it. There was, there was a security breach. You would have never done you it. You never would have done it. <laughs> Let's go watch your stupid fucking ID fail. <laughs> and they go to the liquor store, which is one of the best moments of the movie. So uh, Vogel goes in there. But he's freaking out because 
They're like, all right, here's the list. Here's the money. He's like, oh, man, there's so much stuff on this list. I thought we were just all, what, Matt, what difference does it make if you it's get a one lot of stuff. It's a lot of stuff. I don't know if I can get away with this. Like, what if, He's like hyperventilating. What if they catch my ID and I have to put everything back? I can't deal with that. He's like, what's the difference? Then we're right here back where we started. He's like, if you don't do it, I'll cut your face off, put it on my face, and go in there myself and pretend to be you. <laughs> you don't have the skill or surgical precision to pull off a maneuver You're like up that. steady hands. <laughs> 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 and liquor store is hysterical. Fogel goes in there and he's just browsing awkwardly. But it's true because when you're like you're young, you see the no no one under twenty one allowed. It's very intense. You've never been kid. in one before. Yeah. but it's just a store full of booze. He knocks over the beer can and it's exploding everywhere. <laughs> the and the guy comes back. in, and he's like, sir. Did you do this? Uh, no, but, uh, you know, you should really clean that up. Somebody could get hurt around here. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck my life. <laughs> That's the guy later at the love, party, too. I love how when he drops a six-pack, five of them fall, <laughs> and then he has one in his hand still, he just drops that, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, it's so funny. And then outside in the parking lot, Evan and Seth are having a couple conversations. First, they're talking about getting laid, the possibility <laughs> of it, as well as how Evan brought... A condom and a bottle of spermicidal lube. Lube and Seth's freaking out. I was like, you didn't consult me about this. We're supposed to do this together. And this is not part of the plan. Still, you should always be prepared. I had a general outline. I would make out with Jules. Then I I would go down her for like two hours. She would love that. (laughs) She'd be smitten with that. She'd go out with that. (laughs) (laughs) He's like, what's wrong? You brought a a condom and a bottle of spermicidal lube? That's serial killer stuff. (laughs) Oh, Evan. I would have never been able to handle your fucking four-inch cock if you didn't bring that gigantic bottle of lube. (laughs) (laughs) They're not dried up old ladies. they're good to go. <laughs> <laughs> then cutting back to inside the store where McLovin's checking out. He's being very awkward and uncomfortable. Then back to the I parking lot. I heard they lot. added more hops to it. <laughs> but drinking it for years. And then back to the parking lot where they see that girl, Carrie Hutchinson, who had a breast reduction surgery. And says like, it's like slapping God in the face for giving you a perfect <laughs> gift. And Evan's yeah, like, no, she, she, had, she had back problems. Yeah, she's in better shape than ever now that she has. She can jog comfortably. Yeah, it's not just re- re- making them small. Come on, I gotta them. get a look at these war glocks. All right, let's go. <laughs> she's getting around the corner. Start in the corner. <laughs> <They're> sprinting. <laughs> it's absolutely something Teenage Boys would do. Absolutely. 100%. Absolutely. But then, <laughs> during checkout, he gives his ID to the lady. What's so funny about this movie in the liquor store is it works. The ID yeah. works. However, he gets punched in the face by the guy who steals from the cash register. What the shit? <laughs> <laughs> and then the cops show up, and Evan and Seth get back from seeing Carrie Hutchinson. But if they never left, they would have seen that someone broke in and, and yeah. robbed the place. But they think that Fogel's getting arrested. It was a funny way of getting them out of the location for a little bit. Exactly. I was like, okay, guys would do that. It works, but yeah. the irony is it worked. The ID totally worked. And then... <laughs> so they think Fogel's getting arrested. I didn't know they arrested people for this shit. And I love how Seth's immediate... His, his immediate point uh, of his immediate direction now is to abandon Fogel at all costs. Like, who cares about Fogel? He's, but Evan's like, well, he's going to go to jail. I'm he must be so scared. Forget about Fogel. Fuck him. <laughs> how, how much money can you get? What are you talking about money for? Fogel's getting arrested. So I have money from the party. Oh, my God. So funny. Then fortunately for them, he gets hit by a car by that guy <laughs> reversing. He's I didn't like, even see you, man. I didn't see you. I, listen, I have... A warrant out for a totally nonviolent offense. <laughs> ah, my back! You better get us a bunch of liquor or a bunch of money right now. Seven dollars? What are you, six? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a Velcro wallet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so Seth and Evan take off with this guy. Well, hold on. You know, uh, you look just like my fr- my friend's brother. You look just like him. Do you know anybody named Jimmy? You look just <laughs> like, like his brother. brother. Just, just like him. Just like him. You guys got Facebook? You guys on MySpace? <laughs> MySpace. Yeah. Facebook wasn't a thing yet. Oh, my yet. God. <laughs> you guys on MySpace. So their plan is to go with this guy to a party while Fogel is getting interrogated by the police officers, played by Bill Hader and Seth Rogen. But how about we take this as a moment Oh yeah. to take our halfway point break and we'll run to our intermission then they'll get back because I think it's a good point where all the characters are separated on different parts of their journey to continue the night. It's like the end of the Fellowship of the Ring. Kind of. It, it really is if you think about it. They're about to, they just got swarmed by the orcs in the Urukai. <laughs> <laughs> now, before we continue, though, the best way to support Raiders of the Lost podcast is to become a patron at patreon.com slash Raiders of the Lost podcast. Why would you want to join our Patreon? 
I don't know, maybe because you get two bonus episodes every week for every single tier, no matter if you're $2, $5, $10, $25, or $100, you get access to two bonus episodes as well as awesome perks like access to our ad-free version of the show. You can link your Spotify and you can listen without commercial breaks to Raiders of the Lost Podcast at $5 tier. $10, you get access to our private Discord community. It's not public, so in order to be a part of our incredible film community we've built on Discord with our incredible listeners and fans... Sign up for a Patreon at the $10 point for Discord. Patreon helps us do the show full-time. We could not do it without your support. So thank you so much to everyone. There's a link in the description of this episode to join our Patreon. It's very easy to find. It's clickable. Just hop on that. You can also support the show by leaving those five-star ratings and reviews on Spotify and Apple Podcast. We love to read them out on the show as well on Apple Podcast. So make sure if you haven't left a written review before, Please do because they really cheer us up. And there's some funny reviews you all leave, and we love to read them out on the show. As well as an additional way to support the show is just share us. Word of mouth is the best way for a podcast to grow organically. Share us with your, share us with your friends, with your family members, anyone who you know loves movies, loves TV. Send them your favorite episode. Share us on your Instagram stories. We repost and reshare everyone. Share us on Twitter, everything. Thank you so much for the support. This episode, of course, is sponsored by our friends at MoviePosters.com, the number one place to get your posters online today. Be sure to use our promo code RAIDERS10 at MoviePosters.com to get 10% off your order right now. They have a huge selection of pretty much every movie and TV show imaginable in their poster library. For any fans of Superbad, any comedy fans, they have all sorts of posters for your favorite comedy films. High quality stuff. They look amazing. They also have sizes, framing, and even backlighting for all of your poster needs. So be sure to head on over to movieposters.com and use our promo code RAIDERS10 to get 10% off your order today. Now, before we get into the intermission, I was th- I think it'd be fun to read off some fun letterbox reviews. Oh, for sure. So, <laughs> so how about we'll do that in superlatives? Yeah, sounds good. <laughs> so Andrea, three and a half stars, wrote, and this is the most popular one on Letterbox. Wish I could say I never had a crush on Michael Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> cute guy matthew five stars wrote i swear emma stone has the best what the fuck in film history what the fuck it's great she actually improvised that line i read okay <laughs> i didn't know i didn't i don't know if i've ever seen michael Sarah run but he runs just like i expected him to <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny uh holly four stars your cock is so smooth. Thanks. Yours would be two if you were a man. <laughs> <laughs> Lucy, four and a half stars. That's the coolest fucking story I've ever heard in my entire life. That's insane. Is it? Can I hear it again? Do you have time? <laughs> <laughs> I'm really going to miss these knee slappers when we and Ever at Dartmouth, Seth. <laughs> All right. Those are some really good ones. I well, you it. two are at Dartmouth. I'll be at State where the girls are twice as smart and tw- thus twice as likely to fellash me. <laughs> Or half as smart, I'm sorry. Oh, my God. It's not true. You know, it's an offensive thing to say. <laughs> but it's funny. <laughs> All right, let's do our intermission, then we'll do superlatives, then we'll roll back into super bad. Superlatives first? If you want. Yeah. All right, we'll do superlatives first. Yeah. Screw it. All right, Anthony, who's the MVP of super bad? Jonah Hill. I concur. He uh, d- he's just carries the movie with his comedy. He's so fucking funny. There's a reason why he became such a big star. He is a leading man, and he puts this movie on his shoulders. He's hysterical. So Seth Rogen was actually sub- going to play Seth, but ironically, even though he's only two years older than Jonah Hill, he looked just way too old for the role. He just looks like an old man. And Seth and, and uh, <laughs> Seth and then um Jonah Hill looked much younger, so that's why they cast him instead. That's smart. It wouldn't. I don't think it would have worked as no well. No way. Because the thing with Seth is he's a great comedic actor. However, he's. I feel like he's never really been the funniest person in his movies because he has great supporting exactly, characters, yeah. supporting actors. So for him being the lead comedic person of a movie or supposed to be the funniest person in the movie, it, I don't know if it would work out. Not. I mean, so for Knocked Up, he's supported by hilarious characters as well and actors. And, see, and Paul he, Rudd steals that movie. And Pineapple Express, Franco steals that whole movie. Yeah. So I think Seth works best as a, as either the lead of a comedy, but not being the funniest person in the movie. Agreed. But this one, you have to be the lead and the funniest person in the movie, which mm-hmm. hasn't always suited him. He's great. He's a great assist maker yeah. for comedians. And he's a good leading man, yeah. too. So I, I agree. I don't think it would have worked because you need, you need Seth to be be like the point of comedy and he is his energy in this movie is the key to it, it yeah. it's the key to it working he's he's got so much oomph in every single scene what is the best scene 
The best scene is Saturday Night Flashback <laughs> of their di- their weekly That's routine. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> I think the best scene is Home Ec. Home it's so great. damn funny. It, it's got a good soundtrack in there too, but also I th- I love the back and forth. It's it's a great scene. It's, it's probably my second favorite scene. Ironically, it's so it's it's just Home Ec, but it's so great. Everyone knows you just take Home Ec to get an A, and not to put down your profession, but it's three <laughs> weeks left in school. Give me a fucking break. I'm sorry for cursing. <laughs> What's the best shot in Super Bad? Uh, the bus shot of the trio on, on the bus, and it's and Modal, uh He pulls the camera back and he tracks the entire group group of people on the bus, and it ends on the three of them. And Fogel picks his nose. <laughs> <That's> my, <laughs> I picked the same shot. Plus, that's the funky song. Yeah. Yeah. It's so funny. Oh man, oh, it's that's so, so fu- we it's picked really the same funny. It's really funny because the, they both watch him and says like, "Jesus Christ!" Christ. <laughs> Fogel's just like Fogel's in there, like mouth open, just like. Uh. <laughs> But the, the funny thing is that movie that shot does not work without that great song. Exactly, yeah. It doesn't work at all. It's the tone, man. It's a very cinematic shot with the music. Who's the best actor? I think we're both gonna Jonah say the Hill. same. Jonah yeah. Hill. Jonah Hill is the key to the movie. And then what's the best line? Wait, so I gotta eat lunch like I'm fucking alone, like I'm fucking Steven Glansberg. <laughs> it kills me every time. It's it's almost impossible to pick one, but I'm gonna go with. No one's gotten a hand job in cargo shorts since Nam. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> All the outfits, their first outfits are great. With Seth, Seth has the the camouflage cargo shorts, <laughs> and I'm like, oh my god, I had like three pairs of those. Yeah, and Michael Sarah's outfits as Evan are perfect mm-hmm. as well. Fogels too. Everyone's just dressed very much like teenagers, as well as the girls too. Yeah, That's, you know, really accurate. That was in. Yeah, they they got the fashion right. Movie. All right, let's get into the intermission now. We'll take a break from super bad talk. So, Anthony, let's start with the movie quote competition. You ready? Ready. I asked for a Mai Tai, and they brought me a pina colada. Ah, oh, that's a good one. If you want, I'll do it in the voice okay. of the character. And I asked for Oh, a- so that's office space. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It came to me. <laughs> I asked for a Mai Tai, and they brought me a pina colada. I'll burn this place to the ground. <laughs> a stapler. I'll burn this place to the ground. <laughs> it's the last scene, the last yeah, shot of the, the resort on, on the, the beach. beach. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good one. Okay, two people talking. Are you classified as human? Negative. I am a meat popsicle. Hmm. This sounds insanely familiar. <sighs> One more time. Are you classified as human? Negative. I am a meat popsicle. I don't know, man. What is it? The fifth element. That's what it is. Corporate what happened? Did coffee spill over here? You spilled coffee all over the place. Did I? Yeah. It's coming from your mug. Clearly, it's you. <laughs> yeah. I think there's, oh, there's a hole in it. Oh, it's cracked. Look, Look at that. The cup is cracked. Yeah. Hold on. Let me... Uh, all right. The coffee has been cleaned up. My mug was leaking. And there's a crack in there. What'd there's, you do to the mug, man? I don't, there's this growing puddle of coffee on the table. I'm like, where's this coming from? I saw that happening, and I was like, did he know it spilled? <laughs> <laughs> all right, Going clo- creeping closer to your laptop every second. <laughs> and he's like, I guess Jim doesn't care about his MacBook. <laughs> my MacBook Air. I love my MacBook Air. Moving on to release here, Anthony. When did Burn After Reading come out? I'm going to go 2008. You're one off. It's 2009. Ah, damn. Osborne Cox. Osborne Cox. I am merely a good Samaritan. That's a recommendation if you've ever seen it. <laughs> it's a great movie. This is why I play Pine. <laughs> 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 All right, what year did Bram Stoker's Dracula come out? 1994. 92. Ah, oh, I thought I got it, man. You didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Funny guy. Okay, here's a good one. This is tough. But I feel like you might have a chance. Thanks for the confidence. What is the top rated comedy on IMDb's user rating list? Um, top rated comedy, I would go with Annie Hall. Close. All Pretty right. close. That's up there. That, um, but it came out around the same time. So it's also a movie from the 70s. It's a hint. Okay. Um, but Annie Hall's like a 70, like an 7.9, 7. 7. Yeah. I think. Airplane? Nope. Hmm. Hold on. Let me think. Comedy in the 70s. Very highly rated. It's hard to, to get up up there with the comedy. It is. It's very rare. It's a good guess, though, with Annie Hill. I'll say. Thanks, man. I think it's the top three for comedies. So it's a 70s movie? Yeah. So I'll keep... And that's a hint. Okay. Um. Man. I don't know. Monty Python. Oh. And the Holy, Holy Grail is an 8.2 on IMDb. Damn. Damn. 
I love I love when he kills all the people inside the <laughs> castle. <laughs> <laughs> and the fucking bunny. Oh my god. But when he goes in and he just burks everyone Pretty for great. no reason at all. <laughs> oh my god. It's so funny. Funny movie. What do you got? What was Gary Oldman's big breakout role? Was it True Romance? Incorrect. He was a pretty well-known star for several years before that. So before True Romance. Oh, it's um, Sid and Nancy. Correct. Yeah. Nice. Good movie. Great job. Sid Vicious. Yeah, that was uh, he was in a couple of TV movies before that, and then he got he won a BAFTA for that as Sid Vicious. He's awesome in that movie, he really is. And then that blew him up, and especially in the UK, blew him up. Do we have any haters or unsubscribes this week, Anthony? We do, we do. Let's see. I'm gonna see if we got any new Apple Podcast reviews, and if we don't, please leave one so we can read something on the show soon. All right, so we have user GT5C. So yeah, uh, the user, the user wrote. Never seen Wizards of Waverly Places are really showing your ages unsubscribed. For real, bro. <laughs> I try to hide it as often as I can, but yeah. goodness gracious, getting up there. And then uh, Blaine on Patreon wrote, Selena Gomez's character on Waverly Place is called Alexa Russo. Unsubscribe. <laughs> real ones know she's called Alex Russo. <laughs> Again, yeah, we don't know that show at all. <laughs> at all. But at least you... I heard good things about it, though. At least you could. You brought it up. Yes. I knew that. I knew that was a thing. I didn't have to look it up. I forgot it existed, to be honest. But I have a great streaming recommendation for this episode. What is it? It's a movie that just got put on Max for January 2024. Ooh. Lawless. Nice. Awesome, cool southern crime movie. John Hillcoat. Yeah. Lots of grunts by Tom Hardy. Mm. Yeah. 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 <laughs> really great cardigans as well. <laughs> yeah. He's got some great cardigans. Oh, uh, that was another early Chastain role, too. Yeah, Jessica Chastain. Yeah. My recommendation is a movie that you can now rent. It's one of our favorites of the year called The Holdovers from Alexander Payne. And it's so funny. I hope that you watched it over the Christmas season in theaters. If you couldn't get to it, definitely recommend renting it on Amazon Prime because it's so funny. What streamer did it go to? It's not licensed for free yet. It's just rental only on Amazon. What studio made it? St uh, Neon uh, distributed it. Oh, no shit. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Uh, so they actually paid $30 million for the rights to it because it played at a film festival mm -hmm. last year and it was the highest purchase. It was the highest purchase that year at the film festival. It was, it's that good of a 30 movie. million. It's a good investment because it, it, it made okay money. It made like 12, 15 million box office, but it's a long-term investment and that's going to be a movie that's going to be really loved over time. I think so too. Cause we were talking about this a few weeks ago on a, one of our Christmas episodes that, the Holdovers is going to be an annual watch for so many people now. It's a really well-made well, well made yeah. movie. It's the awesome. more people watch it, the, it's just it's one of those movies that it will, in 10 years, it'll be like, oh, it's going to be on every Christmas list. It's a classic. Yeah, so it's a good investment. Now, let's get back into Superbad, and where do we leave our characters? So Seth and Evan hopped in this random weirdo's car with a Velcro wallet <laughs> to go to a party, <laughs> and then Fogel was abandoned at the liquor store, and he's being interrogated by the police officers played by Seth Rogen and Bill Hader. Their names are Slater and Michaels. Officer Slater and Officer Michaels. Yeah. Slater is Bill Hader. And this is such a funny sequence. First, they're talking to the clerk at the checkout at the parking, at the liquor store. So how tall was he? Well, so say when. Say when. So, but then they're trying to figure out what race he was. Was he white, black, or Hispanic? And he's like, so uh, ethnically, was he like <laughs> us? Was he like you? Or yeah, was he? Was so, he? So he's, no, he was... He was you. He, he was, was like you. He was like you. Oh, he was Jewish. Jewish. So an African <laughs> Jew. Is that what I said? That's not what I said. <laughs> like, I did not say that. <laughs> like, it's kind of a kind of a tame person. Yeah. Dude. It's kind of a weird crime. <laughs> yeah, it's a tame tame crime. Weird crime for a Jew. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's not what I said. I have a goddamn veterinary exam tomorrow. I have a goddamn exam. Apparently somebody has an exam tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> was he he looked he was five ten, whatever five ten is, and he looked like Eminem. So, so like an or like would an he have a round face or <laughs> <laughs> oh my god and then they start in, uh, interviewing Fogel about being hit in you're the gentleman assaulted. who was punched yes. <laughs> <laughs> and they ask him how old are you old enough <laughs> old, old enough for what 
to party. party. <laughs> what if we see your ID identification? <laughs> they're looking at it and laughing in slow mo. <laughs> You're an organ donor. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's just like I said, uh, just like my wife, uh, what, what's, the, what's the line? I say, even when you're dead, women just always try to tear your heart out. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. I say it every week. It's, it's still, still funny. funny. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, yeah, we're not going to catch the guy. It's no big deal. Uh, what are you doing? He's like, oh, I was actually about to catch that bus. Oh, we can give you a lift home. Where are you going? <laughs> so now we're split up, and we have a back and forth between two cars. We're inside the police cruiser with Fogel and the cops. And then Evan and Seth with this creepy guy who asks if they're on MySpace. <laughs> and Jules calls Evan, right? I hope your friends are ready to get fucked up. <laughs> and then, he, then the creepy guy puts his hand out back oh, yeah. for like oh, a high yeah. five. And Seth's like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> you know, one of you guys could have sat up front with me. <laughs> <laughs> they're both in the back. We're okay back here. <laughs> oh, my God. I forgot about that. <laughs> These guys on MySpace? <laughs> and so, and then... Fogles with the cops and then they get a call at the bar. <laughs> Always take a call at a bar because at least you get a beer out of it. <laughs> it's a great, great job right there. <laughs> Hell yeah, it's a great quote. <laughs> well, but first they're running through all the red lights. Yeah. <laughs> Engage. Engage. You know, this job, this job isn't all cracked up to be like shows like CSI make it. I thought there was semen everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. I thought there was a semen database. <laughs> but it turns out, no. And I... Oh, how are we supposed to catch one guy in an entire county? <laughs> a guy. <laughs> <laughs> Every time they run a red light... They near, caused like near accidents behind them. <laughs> <laughs> Car ninety eight on it. <laughs> I love how the what are they called the uh, the person on the call on the radio. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like ninety nine. Take it. <laughs> it's like it's hard to get them to take anything. You and can I, tell. I like one where dispatch. someone's calling. Dispatch is calling in. Oh my god, there's so much blood. <laughs> <laughs> Turns it off. <laughs> and so they're going to this bar. Where this unhoused homeless man is causing a ruckus because he clearly wants to get arrested because later he's like, you can't unarrest me, you goddamn pigs. <laughs> and they take him out, or Fogel accidentally takes him out, but obviously it shows how poorly trained uh, Michaels and Slater are because Michaels takes out, he's going, do I shoot him? Do, do I, I shoot him? him? <laughs> it's just like, no, a, no. It's like a quiet family restaurant. <laughs> And then Seth and Evan show up to the party with this weird guy. It's the first time they've ever been to a house party. And it's probably. adults. It's an adult party, and they're clearly out of place. Like, they're just they're terrified. Older. And clearly, as soon as they walk in, this guy is not like because he goes to give a pound to one of the guys sitting on the couch, and that guy's like, "What the fuck are you doing here?" Yeah. <laughs> and he goes to talk on the phone. He's like, "Oh, sit over there, sit over there." But Seth <laughs> sees like a bucket of beers. He's like, "Let's grab one of these buckets and get out of <laughs> How here." How are we gonna get a bucket out of here? <laughs> <laughs> and then the creepy guy. Gets his ass kicked. And he's not welcome there. Oh, who are you calling? Your friends? Your fantastic friends again? Oh, yeah. They're going to call them and bring them here? You're not welcome. You weren't invited, basically. And then they, they see this. Like, they're like in the real world now. Yeah. They're not in school protected. And they're with adults. And, like, sometimes people get fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> they're terrified. Evan's like, listen, we should just get out of here. He's like, listen, I'm, I, I don't want to die for, for sex. He's like, I will die for pussy hands down. <laughs> he's like, he's like, you don't want to die for beer, do you? He's like, no, but I will die for pussy. <laughs> <laughs> so then they split up. But also we have a great needle drop, Stranglehold by Ted Nugent plays. Yeah, yeah. And we talked about that song when we did our episode on Days and Confused. Which will be in a week or so. Did we do it? No, we did at the beginning of the month. Yeah, yeah. It's, we recorded ahead of schedule, so we're all over the place. Great needle drop, because yeah. obviously a couple movies really heavily influenced this film. For yeah. sure, American Pie, but also Dazed and Confused. Oh, Huge for sure. influence on this movie. I mean, one of the characters' name is Slater. Yeah. The cop's name is Slater, so I, I definitely think it's a reference to Dazed and Confused. We also get the the hilarious period blood scene. <laughs> I'm sad to going through the party, and then this girl just starts dancing with, you dance high. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, what do I do? <laughs> and then it cuts to Evan, he gets a, he, he gets a call from Becca. Becca's with her friends in the car. Remember when phones had bad service? Yeah, terrible. So phones, Often had bad service. Almost every call was it was terrible. Breaking up. Dropped calls were a commonality. It was like phone companies would advertise no dropped calls, like when they could figure it out. What do they call blackout areas or dead zones or something like that, where you could dead zones were in yeah the fewest amount of dead zones. Yeah, and it would be a dropped <laughs> call if like your phone because you would be on the phone with someone and it would just end. And you know, it was just the service disconnected. <laughs> it's like nobody hung up. It just ended. I like when they used to advertise, they would show like a, a map of the country in all the areas that your phone won't drop calls. <laughs> it looked like your, the map had like herpes or something. 
<laughs> where you could connect a call. <laughs> it was bad, man. If you're going up a hill, see you later, service. If you made it, if you lived in the middle of the country, good luck getting a call. I know, for real. Now we're, we're so lucky. I, I don't remember the last time a, draw, a call dropped for me. They don't. They just don't. They figured it out. <laughs> Sometimes when mom's driving on the way home from work and she's in Wayland, she drops a call when I'm on the phone with her. Yeah, it's because they put antennas everywhere. Yeah. They're everywhere now. They like antennas. Thousands of them. Um, but another thing that happened is the call would be scratchy and you couldn't even, it would be muffled and sometimes you couldn't hear what they were saying. They couldn't hear what you were saying. That happens in this. He's like, fucking bitch. Fucking I'll fucking damn, slap this that's phone. That's really rude. <laughs> fucking cunt. Stupid fucking phone company. Goddamn <laughs> fucking bitches. <laughs> <laughs> and then, but they, they connect on a phone call later eventually. Yeah. Sh- short but then it cuts back to the dancing and it's a slow song now and she's grinding. Duh, duh, oh yeah, it's Biggie duh, Smalls. Duh, yeah, duh. And she's grinding on his leg, and he's like, <laughs> and it ends, and she goes, "Thanks." <laughs> he's like, "What the fuck just happened?" He's like, "What was that?" And he's trying to leave the party, and the guy. Yeah, the then couch. he goes, "That was fucking crazy." <laughs> <laughs> the guy's on the couch, pointing like, "Hey man, are you bleeding? What is that? Is that blood?" Dance- it's Merlot. <laughs> Rude dance with some girl in there. <laughs> yeah. Why would I have blood on me? <laughs> Duh. <laughs> oh my god, is that fucking period blood? You got period blood on me. <laughs> and everyone's making fun of him. I got tampons. I have one. <laughs> I like how it's the Merlot. Guy, he's like, hold on. Like, let me get a photo of that. He takes out the flip phone. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been a shitty photo. I love when he goes to wait, goes to the bathroom line. He's like, is this the bathroom line? Cause I gotta, I gotta clean this Merlot off me. And she's like, yeah, this is the lie. He's like, fuck me. Right. <laughs> then he goes in the basement. Yeah. And he discovers the laundry, the Tide laundry uh, detergent bottles. And all the beer in the fridge. And this is obviously what have poisoned everybody. Yeah. Because he, he, he dumps out the laundry. Beer. <laughs> and he dumps out, dumps out the detergent and pours the beer in. Yeah. Which is funny. But you probably would have died if you drank that beer. Oh, yeah. Or at least horribly poisoned and ill. And then he also... So he's walking out with the beer in the t- detergent in the living yes. room. And then the guy who owns the house is like, hey, man. You, what are you doing? Because he sees the, the period, period blood. blood. He's like, oh, we're blood brothers. Blood brothers. Maybe like there's some ricochet. Like I bumped into you. you what are you doing dancing me? with my girl? <laughs> but he's also like, what is that? He's like, detergent. What do you have it for? I got period blood on me. <laughs> I, I got blood on my pants. <laughs> <laughs> and then the cops show up. But uh, yeah, they get into a yeah. they get into a fight. Yeah. And the cops don't show up till oh, no, later. No, 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 yeah. So, but but his girlfriend calls Mark. You should hide. I call the cops. You should hide your gun. <laughs> But they escape during the fight, and they run out on foot. Yeah. And this is where eventually— They're mad at each other because they had the fight, and Seth's like, you you ditched me. And not only are you ditching me now, but you're ditching me by but going he, to yeah, college next year, different school. How she could I have gone into Dartmouth? And also, you, no, the rooming with Fogel comes into play later. Yeah. But then back at the bar with Fogel <laughs> and the cops, they're just having like 10 beers in. They're watching the footage from the security cam. Oh, hello. My name's, my name's McLove, and I'm trying to— blow! <laughs> you can take a punch like a chip. <laughs> Do I need ladies? We can show the stage. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you don't want to meet a chick at a bar. <laughs> and then my wife had a bar. <laughs> it turned out she was an actual whore. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! And oh my god! I'm dying. I got a new wife now. New wife. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You gotta you gotta meet a girl at like a at like a farmers market. Pumpkin patch. <laughs> Pumpkin patch. Somewhere non threatening. <laughs> <laughs> and they get a call. They they pretend they get a call so they don't have to pay for the beers. Oh, oh, oh sorry, yeah, we're coming go. right away. Sorry, duty what? calls. Can we get twelve road? Can we get fifteen beers, beers to go? <laughs> <laughs> and they're hanging, they're partying. Shit, yeah, we should get some road beers. They're shooting the gun at the stop sign, and then the cops show up. Like, oh my god, it's the cops! Get out of here because they get a call. The other cops get a call to the house party that Seth and Evan were just at. Yeah, this shows how close they are because they're in a small town. Yeah. And then and this is an LA movie, by the way. As they're yeah. as the cops are driving away from the cops, eventually they <laughs> <laughs> evidence that they're having their argument on the streets, and then the cops Slater hits j- hits Seth with his car, <laughs> breaks the windshield. <laughs> this actually gets pretty dark for a moment too. Yeah, I love how uh, Michaels is like, "Oh, I can't believe this is happening again. I can't believe it's happening again. What are the chances?" <laughs> 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 so then they. Uh, they make a plan where the, the cops are going to frame the kids. Pussies on the pavement! <laughs> Pussies on the pavement. Hold, the, hold hands, hold hands. Little sister, I never want to get you. Little sister. <laughs> <laughs> and then inside the car, Michaels, he, he lights up a cigarette, gives it to Focal. He's like, so yeah, we're going to say that these two guys jumped in front of our car. I don't know where. There's nothing we can do, do about it. You cool with saying that? <laughs> You're a witness. <laughs> yeah, sure, man. <laughs> he like gives him a cigarette. It's so funny. Smoke up. Smoke up. Breathe. Smoke up, Focal. Life's short, Focal. Life's life short, McLovin. <laughs> <laughs> Pussy's on the pavement. And then the the kids are on the ground. 
they think they're like their lives are over. Then they see Fogel, they see Fogel get out of the cop car in slow motion. He flicks his cigarette, coughing, <laughs> coughing. What the fuck? What the fuck? And then Evan just jumps up and runs away. <laughs> I love how <laughs> I love how when Slater gets out of the car and starts to talk to them. He's like, he's not even apologizing. He's like, you guys all right? You guys all right? <laughs> yeah, what have you, what have you been going on? You, what are you guys doing? You doing a little drinking tonight? Pull, they pull the guns on them. <laughs> <laughs> Pussies on the pavement! <laughs> <laughs> and then the, all three of them Spread run away. Spread, Spread your shit! Spread your shit! <laughs> <laughs> so the three of them all run away and scatter. <laughs> fastest kid alive. He's the fastest kid alive. He's <laughs> the fastest kid alive. <laughs> and they all link up eventually because McLovin... And Seth are together, right? And then they find Evan. Evan's in the bushes by himself. And Michael's like, Shh, I'm going to shoot my gun in the air. Shh. It'll scare him out from wherever he's hiding. <laughs> he's like, this is a terrible idea, but it works because Evan jumps out of the bushes. Like, oh my God, they shot Seth. Yeah. And then he runs into McLovin. He runs into Fogel and Seth. And then they get to the bus stop and McLovin's like, Fogel's like, I can't believe we got it. We got the booze. We can, we're going to the party. We're only a couple blocks away. <laughs> Whereas Seth and Evan hate each other right now. And they're on the bus. McMuffin! You don't <laughs> got your cop friends to protect you now. <laughs> to protect your booze. McMuffin. 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 <laughs> 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 That's my favorite line, McMuffin. <laughs> it's you, McMuffin. <laughs> oh and then Gold Schlick bottle, super slow mo, like 120 frames per second, flies in the air and shatters. It's the most dramatic shot in the entire movie, which is great. And they get kicked off the bus, but they're right there at the party. I love how it's super dramatic, and then it just cuts to them getting kicked off the bus. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but and then Seth goes into the party and he's like the hero of the party. He's got the booze and slow motion shot. Who the fuck is Seth? <laughs> me. I'm Seth. Let's do another shot to me. <laughs> and they're all they're all kind of having a, a fun but awkward night. Mc, McLovin's probably having the best night because he finally builds up the courage to dance with Nicole, Nicola and then obviously eventually hooks up Sup. with Nicola. McLovin. <laughs> no, Fogel. 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 And then he starts Sup. to dance with her. Evan's having a tough night because. This, since they took so long to get to the party, Becca is heavily intoxicated, but also has been talking about Evan the whole time. And obviously, Evan wants to hook up with her. But I love how Ev um, Becca's friend finds Evan. Like, where have you been? Becca's been looking for you. She's been talking about you all night. And he's like, oh, good things, I hope. And she's like, more like talking about you. She's going to blow you. So he's like, I hope she said, does she think I'm a nice guy? <laughs> 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 and then when she, that, she, Becca finds him and she's like, get here, drink. Drink the, drink the Have alcohol. Have a drink. Have, Have a, a drink. drink. And he's like, to respecting women. Guys, 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 guys. <laughs> to, respect, to respecting women. People respecting women. And everybody in the background is like, what the fuck? <laughs> but at first, he isn't, he's, it's unethical. So he's going in the bathroom by himself drinking drinking horrible because vodka. the friend says he's like isn't it unethical if i sleep with her she's like no if you're drunk too <laughs> so then he's like talk he, he looks in the mirror he's like it's everything's great like she wants to suck on your penis <laughs> it's the best thing <laughs> it's a good thing it's the best <laughs> she wants to suck on your penis <laughs> and then, she likes you she wants to suck on your penis and then seth is the life of the party he's the hero he brought the booze and jules is having a great time but they're not really talking too much because he's just partying he thinks that jules is partying as well but little does he know, Jules doesn't drink alcohol. She's just hosting. Yeah. But, you know, he's the life of the party. And eventually, obviously. Well, it goes back to Evan and Becca in the bedroom. Oh, man. Which is so awkward. She's completely <laughs> gone. I don't see why you have to be such a little bitch about it. I don't it. see why I have to be such a little bitch. I have something for you under, under here. She's like, da, 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 da. I have a little something for you. You are the prettiest here. girl this side of the Mississippi. You're so unique. <laughs> <laughs> What's this in here? You have such a smooth cock. Thank you. You would too if you were a man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give you the best blow, Jay, ever. It's so, it's so uncomfortable and awkward. And I like when she's trying to get his sweatshirt off. He's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, it's it's this meaningful, it's vintage. Yeah, be careful. <laughs> it's vintage. She's like, okay. <laughs> But then Evan, obviously, he's a good guy. He realizes this is wrong. She's way out of her mind drunk. She doesn't know what she's doing right now. And he stops doing what they're doing. He stops trying to hook up with her. And then she's upset. She's like, I don't see why you have to be such a little bitch about it. She's <laughs> calling me a bitch. And then she th throws up, yeah. Get, get up. What's her name? Whatever her name oh, is. Yeah. Ask for a friend. <laughs> <laughs> now, and then Seth is trying to find the right moment to kiss Jules. Yeah. And he doesn't realize that she's completely sober. Well, he tells her 
you know, he's like, can we go outside and talk? It's too loud in here. And she's like, yeah, sure. And they're talking. And then he's realized that, like, this is my last shot. And you're not, oh, you're not drunk at all? She's like, no, I don't really drink. I don't drink. I'm just, you know, I like, I'm just here having fun and hosting. Then and he's like, then it's, there's no way we're going to hook up. And she's like, what does me being drunk have to do? He's like, look at me. Look at you. Yeah. So he doesn't think that she would like him if she was sober. And he thinks he blew it because... He's crying later on. She finds him. Are you crying? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm man. still thinking both my eyes. But he basically says, like, I blew it. You know, this is our last chance to hook up. And she's like, you didn't totally blow it. And then he leans in for a kiss and headbutts her in the eye. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus fucking. What the fuck? What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> and he falls. He's like, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and then Fogel is upstairs with Nic- Nicola. He's about to lose his virginity. Technically, he does. I love how, like. She thinks she, he's like this cool older guy with fake ID, and he's super experienced. And then she's like, she got this look of like, what is? Does he know what he's doing? He's like, I got. He's like, it's she, in. Uh, oh my god, it's in. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, what? So technically, Fogel loses her virginity yeah, for just a couple yeah, seconds. Yeah. But also before, he's like, she she's sucking on his finger, and then Fogel goes, I got a boner. I got a boner. She's like, good. Do you have a condom? I do. And a bottle of lube. <laughs> <laughs> He's got the same little bottle of spermicidal lube as Evan. Oh, let me see that. This is a good time. Good kind, too. It's a good brand. Let me oh see that. God. He throws it. <laughs> <laughs> now you owe me $9 because I'm not going to walk over there and get it. And it exploded. <laughs> but then the cops show up at the party. Oh, shit. It's the cops. <laughs> Vogel, were you violating that girl? <laughs> I mean, McLovin. <laughs> McLovin, where are you violating that girl? And Evan's like basically drinking himself to oblivion and depression on the couch yeah, with Maroki. With Maroki. And then the cops show up and, he's, and he passes out. And Seth saves, he picks up Evan and saves Evan. And even though he's kind of humili- humiliating himself in front of everybody by doing this. He's my best friend. <laughs> I gotta save him. I'm, I'm gonna save you, Evan. I'm gonna save you. I love when he picks him up and everyone's just like looking at him like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> And then Fogel upstairs, the cops show in. But I, I love the shot where Slater's dancing to the house. He's like, th- th- and it's the song dude, dude. is "Don't Trust the Police." Boom, 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 boom. It's great. It's great. <laughs> He's like doing like almost like a crib walk. <laughs> and then they bust in on McLovin, who they reveal, you know, it's Fogel. And we know you weren't twenty one. You know, we saw a lot of ourselves in you, and we just want to help you out. How long did you know from the start? And then, <laughs> but then Michaels is like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. And then they make up, and and we should be blocking McLovin's cock. We should be guiding it. <laughs> they all have a group hug, and Nicola comes back. She's like, what the fuck? <laughs> but then McLovin asks for a favor, and they leave the party with him, like, being crazy. Like, oh, we caught the notorious Fogel. He's crazy. He's crazy. But then Jesse spits on him, and then he pulls out his fucking baton and whacks him in the face with it. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> then they go on their crazy spree of destroying the car and shooting it up to Van Halen yeah. and having uh, Fogel sign the witness papers that someone stole the car and went crazy with it, mm-hmm. which is hilarious, but also a terrible plan. And then Evan and, and Seth, you know, Seth... Well, he's they let him Evan. fire the gun. Yeah, they let him shoot the gun. I don't know. Can you? <laughs> <laughs> Empty the clip. Just break yourself, fool. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Evan wakes up in Seth's arms. He's like, you can stop carrying me now. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> it's the cops. And then they have their conversation about, you know, they go back for pizza bagels, right? But they're, pizza talking, bagels. they're talking about how Seth knew that Evan was going to live with Fogel. He saw his housing papers. He saw your housing shit when you were in the shower. (laughs) (laughs) I saw like your housing shit. (laughs) I love how, and I love how the next morning they wake up, they're both fucking blackout, and then Seth's like, "What the fuck? (laughs) (laughs) What the the fuck?" (laughs) Because they're just they sat, they slept next to each other in their sleeping bags, talking about how much they love each other. I just want to scream up on the top of the tallest building and say, "I love Evan. I love my best friend Evan." (laughs) He's just like. Your mom. They make it look like it's a one night stand morning. Yeah, that's how they frame the entire context of the scene. It's Your mom so has funny. Huge tits. <laughs> so, oh, are you leaving already? Oh yeah, I was just gonna go. Well, do what do you want to like hang out? <laughs> <laughs> I have to go to the mall. All right. Well, your mom has huge tits. <laughs> <laughs> but it's also a sort of a double confession where Evan admits that you know I'm afraid to live with new people. Yeah. So that's why I chose to live I'm with afraid Fogel. to live with strangers. Yeah. Seth accepts it. And admits and obviously confesses that he knew the whole time and he's also been lying. So they've been lying to each other in a lot of different ways. Pizza bagels. Pizza bagels. And they go to the mall 
And they run into Jules and Becca. And it's a really sweet little combo. You yeah, know, Jules has a black eye, though. So first, Becca apologizes to Evan. Thanks for being so nice. Yeah, and apologizes yeah. for being so drunk and belligerent. Did I throw up on you? No, I got, I got out of the way. I said, stay away from me. It uh, was right past me. <laughs> Get away from me. Get away from me. <laughs> <laughs> and then Seth apologizes to Jules with her black eye. And it's really sweet. For everything from like, everything. you look great except for just like, just right here. Yeah. <laughs> I think you look kind of cool with the black eye. <laughs> He's like, I had such bad acne last year. It basically became an expert on the stuff with cover-up. So Jules asks, why don't you buy me cover-up? And then, you know, Becca, maybe you and Evan can go get shit. Well, yeah, and I can drive you home. Yeah. Well, we have, we, I have your information. Yeah. I have your information. <laughs> I took my dad's car. <laughs> and then they separate, and I love how Evan and Jules are going down the escalator, and he looks up at, Ev- at uh, Seth, and he looks up at Evan with Becca. And it's like they're being separated. <laughs> yeah, they're both looking at each yeah. other, not listening to the girls. <laughs> <laughs> with like longing like kind of like afraid yeah and a nice uh, nice ending shot of the mall. Century city mall is that century city mall? yeah oh, before no they shit. redid it no shit yeah and that's 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 super bad man it's fucking great <laughs> i love it I, I love this movie so much it's so funny and then I the some, end credits yeah. end with penis drawings yeah, yeah yeah the whole montage of it so i have some fun facts about this i would love to hear them the dick drawing scene required enormous legal complications getting it to the screen every single drawing had to be approved individually by the studio's legal department and they would get notes back saying too big too veiny (laughs) (laughs) too veiny (laughs) the shot of the little girl holding the drawing is actually the hands of a tiny adult woman next up so the blu-ray blah blah blah. the word fuck is used 100 and 75 times. The movie itself is only 113 minutes long. The average is approximately 1.6 uses of the word fuck per minute. 84 of them are said by Jonah Hill alone. Did you know that this is Eminem's favorite movie of all time? I do. He referenced it in two of his songs, Brainless and Ballin' Uncontrollably. Ray, do you want to fuck me, Ray? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Marshall. <laughs> Hello, Marshall. <laughs> Michael Sarah's mother actually read the script before he did, and she was the one who convinced him to try out for the part. That's pretty funny. Is his mother in casting or something? Well, she, I believe she acted as his agent when he was younger. Oh, okay. As yeah. a child actor. Yeah, that's, that, makes sense. that's common with his manager, not agent yeah. manager. What I love about this movie is it opens with the, the 1970s version of the Columbia Pictures logo instead of the 2000s. It's version. great. I love that one. I love it. This is, like I said, the film debut of Emma Stone. During filming, Christopher Mintz Plassey was the youngest at 17 years old, Michael Sarah was 18, and Jonah Hill was the oldest at 23. Jennifer Lawrence actually almost got cast as Jules in this movie. She would have been good. Yeah, she would have worked fine. Bill Hader stated that he was offered tons of roles as cops after this film due to the popularity of his character. <laughs> Justin Long actually is in a deleted scene. It, it didn't get, it didn't make the final cut really? of the Have movie. Have you seen it? I haven't seen it. Hold on. Let me look it up real quick to see what the scene is like. But he, yeah. it got cut. It was too long of a scene for the final cut. I believe he's a high school student as well. He was peaking in the late 2000s. Um, Seth, I mean, Justin Long in Superbad. So the screenplay for this film was actually featured in the 2006 Blacklist, a list of the most liked unmade scripts of the year. Couldn't find it. Couldn't find it. They might have just never even put it online. Couldn't find it. All right, what else do we have? That's it for my fun facts. I think that's all I got, too. Oh, it's Drill Bit Taylor was the other Judd Apatow movie that came out the same year as Dewey Cox. So those were both 2007 Less memorable one. (laughs) All right, well. That was with Owen Wilson, right? You know, I I like this movie a lot because of Jonah Hill and Michael Cera, and it was really important for their careers, and no one knew what was going to come of their careers after this movie because it's a big comedy hit, but you never know what's going to happen with young actors and how their careers will pan out long term. And I I remember seeing, like, I don't know, like five, six years ago, watching some old interviews of this movie with them, and there was this one interviewer who was basically, his interview was roasting them both and saying like, so now that your careers are basically over, what do you think is going to happen after this movie? And they're, it was really offensive Weird. stuff. And eventually, freaking Jonah Hill's an Oscar-nominated actor working with Leonardo DiCaprio and great actors and directors, even Tarantino, Scorsese, and then Michael Cyrus had a great career as well. But even coming after, the, after this, he does Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, which is a very mm. popular movie. So 
I, I think it's crazy how the internet back then you could be in an interview and interview and be so rude to somebody like this. You wouldn't fake face backlash. For yeah, it. yeah, but now you can't obviously do stuff like that. But it's like one of the most rude, offensive things I've ever seen for for press materials before. But this guy's obviously a fucking idiot because these two guys are awesome and they had great careers. Yeah, Jonah Hill. He went through a lot of bad times with the press early in his career, and he's talked about it in interviews and. Journalists would always ask him about his weight and his size. Even Kimmel, when he was on the show, yeah. he said, you smell nice. You, sm you smell nice. He's like, why is that surprising to you? Why wouldn't I smell nice? Yeah. And so Jonah Hill actually faced so much, hon honestly, ridicule by the press and by interviewers and, and on talk shows like that, for example. So he had a rough go of it. And that's why I, he he dropped that documentary the ther with his therapist. Mm -hmm. I never saw it, but like, apparently that guy saved his life. Yeah, but then uh, those text messages with his ex-girlfriend came out. What are they? <laughs> what? He seems very controlling. Oh, really? Yeah, so it was bad press that happened right after that documentary. So it's really? sort of an irony of like this mental health documentary, and then it shows like a, a more intimate side of him that we've never uh, seen before. Damn. You never know, people. You never know. You never truly know actors or celebrities or anything. Yeah. It's all, yeah, it's just like, actors shouldn't even have phones. <laughs> just write letters. Just, yeah. Or just be, you know, good people as well. Yeah, yeah true. not saying, I don't know, I don't know Jonah Hill personally, but it, ha it came out last year when that documentary came out. Oh, I didn't even know. Well, interesting. Anyways, it's really funny. <laughs> it's a great irony. <laughs> all right, that wraps our episode on Super Bad. Let us know if you like this style of going through the movie chronologically, scene by scene. We used to do it. It's pretty fun. It's a good time, and we had a blast. This is one of our favorite comedies ever. You know, we were the peak age for this movie when it came out in 2007. We were 16 years old, and it was just amazing, hysterical. Everybody loved this movie, and everyone still loves this movie. And and it, it still holds up. It still holds up. A couple of, of jokes are not didn't hold up very well, but other than that, I'd say 98% of the movie holds up perfectly fine. Yeah, it's honestly not even that. It's not that offensive. It's just vulgar. Yeah, it's just vulgar. It's just dirty. Yeah. Dirty, raunchy, vulgar humor. Mm -hmm. I think that's what teenagers I, are like. I think it's aged well. And it made it was a huge hit for a reason. And when it comes to high school movies, there hasn't been a hit like this in the genre in a long time for a high school comedy. That's why a lot of teen comedies do what Superbad did. Yeah, there are some really solid ones. You know, Booksmart's really solid. Um, Easy A was really good too. But in terms of being a huge hit, this is untouchable. I feel like the century for yeah, high school you, movies. Yeah, you can't make a comedy that makes this much money anymore. Yeah. But thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Raiders of the Lost Podcast. Don't forget to become a patron today at patreon.com slash Raiders of the Lost Podcast. If you're watching on YouTube, don't leave. Make sure to subscribe, like, leave a comment, as well as leave those five-star ratings and reviews on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Take care, everybody. See you later. Check Catch you later. later. Check, check you later, Check man. you later. This episode was executive produced by our chosen one patrons, Cody Moen, Andrew Hagen, Becca Keen. Benjamin Cook, Calvin Murphy Griggs, Nicholas Martin, Darian Singleton, Tyler McFly, Andrew Hagen. Our chosen one patrons are our biggest supporters. Thank you so much. Raiders of the Lost podcast is a mirror image production. Sound mixing done by Jacob Kosler. Opening music by Chase Jackson.